So today we're delving into Batman issue 139, right after the Gotham War. Batman's taking a new direction, something we kinda sensed with the whole Batman of Zurinar thing lurking underneath. Now Batman's facing relocation because the brownstone's compromised. It's a tough spot for him, like back in the early days with no network, no Robin, and limited resources. And to add to the mix, there are the three Jokers. So if you're not subscribed, hit that button and let's dig into this breakdown. So Bruce Wayne's back home, living in a small apartment after a busy night as Batman. He managed to stop an arson, saved folks from robberies, and took down a heroin dealer. Pretty eventful. But despite all that, he's hitting a wall trying to track down the Joker in Gotham. It's been weeks since he parted ways with his crew, feeling like maybe flying solo is the way to go. No Robins, no Bat family, just him as Batman. But deep down, that Zurinar Batman persona is simmering beneath the surface. While tinkering with his new gadgets, he picks up a code created by the GCPD specifically for the Joker, and now he's dead set on nabbing all three of those Jokers. Batman arrives at a crime scene where a guy's suspended midair, and there's a painter involved. As he checks things out, he discovers bats nailed to the floor, forming a map of places significant to him, spots where he trained and where his mentors were. That's a big question mark. How does the Joker know all this personal history? He pieces it together and figures out that the Joker's targeting his very first mentor, the Grey Shadow. This mentor taught him all about cat burglary, and recently, Interpol tracked her to the States. With this lead, Batman heads off to a mansion that's like a huge dollhouse. The owner, a bit of a recluse, adored solitude and had a thing for dolls. Batman gets inside and suddenly hears the Joker's voice. Creepy dolls start spraying him with lighter fluid, setting the place ablaze. It's a huge risk because this mansion could go up in flames in seconds. Then out of nowhere, a giant baby attacks Batman. Turns out it's Floyd Shannon, an old Joker goon now trained by Selina. In a shocking move, he takes his own life in front of Batman. But the drama doesn't stop there. Batman hears a voice upstairs thinking it's the Grey Shadow, but instead finds a TV showing a live demo of the Joker attacking her. Then the Joker himself peeks through the ceiling. Batman goes into action, pulling down the ceiling boards. On the next floor, he discovers multiple bodies highlighted by spotlights, a grim setup showcasing the tragedies Batman endured. The deaths of his parents, Robin, Alfred, and even Catwoman. So, the Joker's showing Batman this twisted display. Everyone he's ever been close to, they all end up dead. Batman confronts the Joker, wanting to put an end to the games and the victimization, proposing a one-on-one -on -one showdown. But the Joker's not interested in fighting Batman. He's calling out the Batman of Zurinar, seeking the real challenge. Batman's shaken by this, losing control as the Batman of Zurinar takes over. Bruce Wayne's powerless, watching this internal struggle unfold. The Batman of Zurinar assures Joker there won't be more victims, hinting that tonight, Batman's going to end the Joker for good. But inside Batman's mind, he's trying to regain control, only to see different versions of Zurinar and Batman from various timelines. They're telling Batman he's no longer in charge, and that's where this issue wraps up. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this comic breakdown. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Stay tuned for the next issue's breakdown. See you next time.